like you had isolated base drive for the BJT where the power side and the control side were physically isolated, galvanically isolated. Even in the case of the MOSFET, we can have galvanically isolated gate drive circuit. Now we saw the BJT gate drive, BJT based gate drive circuit where the MOSFET is driven by this Q1, Q2 totem pole BJTs which is driven by Q3 and which was driven by an NPN stage. Now this NPN stage I will replace it with the NPN BJT of an optocoupler. The optocoupler where this transistor is being driven by the light emitted from a photodiode. So let me ground this and then connect the pulse source to this optocoupler diode in this fashion and we have VB the pulse source here. So observe here when VB is 0 there is no drive current to the optocoupler, diode current is not there, diode will not emit photons and the optocoupler transistor is off. So when this is off there is no drive current here, Q3 is off. Q3 is off, there is no drive in this path and therefore Q1 is off. When Q1 is off, there is no drive to charge up the capacitance of the MOSFET and therefore the MOSFET is off. So when VB is low, MOSFET is off. When VB is high, there is a drive current flowing through the diode and the diode emits light and the optocoupler transistor is on. There is a drive current here, Q3 is on, Q3 allows drive current to flow through in this path to Q1, Q1 is on and Q1 is on. There is a, a drive current to charge up the capacitance of the MOSFET and the MOSFET turns on. When you want to switch off the MOSFET, you are switching off, the pulse here goes low this is off, this is off, Q3 is off, Q1 is off. But there is a charge on the capacitor here, plus minus. So that is coming to this point, the emitter of Q2. The base of Q2 is low and because the emitter of Q2 is positive, Q2 will turn on and because Q2 turns on, there is a reverse current flow in this fashion and discharges the gate charge capacitance. So this is the discharge path and turns off the MOSFET. So this is an isolated gate drive circuit for the MOSFET. Remember the power side are having different grounds, the control side is having a different ground and just like in the case of the BJT you need to have a power supply with isolated secondary windings and one winding is used for generating the power supply for the power side and another winding is used for generating the power supply for the control side. So in that way total isolation galvanic isolation is maintained between the power side and the control side and the optocoupler gives an isolation of 3000 uh, volts uh, between the two sides. Like in the case of the BJT base drive, we discussed with transformer isolation. The MOSFET base drive can also be done with transformer isolation. Similar circuit. Let me draw that. So the primary of the transformer is connected to an NPN transistor and the NPN transistor is driven by a two resistor drive, which we are familiar with in this fashion. Observe this is M NPN transistor which I am using here can also be done with replaced with a MOSFET. Now the secondary of the transformer is passed through a diode like in the case of the BJT drive and it is connected to the power MOSFET. The power MOSFET is connected in this fashion drain connected to the external load source 
is connected to some other point in the power circuit. The transformer non dot end is connected to the source and the dot end to the diode and the diode is connected in series with the resistor in this fashion. So this will be a one resistor drive for the MOSFET. Let us name the parts this is R1, this is D1, VCC, Q, R3, R4 and this is VB, the base drive pulse given at this point. So when the base drive pulse VB is high, so you will have a current flow through R3, there will be a base drive current for Q, Q will be on. When Q is on, the transformer primary is active with dot end positive. Dot end positive means on the secondary side dot end positive and there will be a drive current flowing through D1, R1 to charge up the MOSFET and the MOSFET will turn on. So as long as the dot end is positive, the MOSFET will be on. Now when VB goes low, there, won't, there will not be drive current through R3, Q is off and here the dot end becomes negative, non dot end becomes positive, the diode will be reverse biased and it will clip the waveform. However, the MOSFET has MOSFET capacitance, the, there is no discharge path for the MOSFET capacitance, so it will not turn off. So you have to provide a discharge path for the MOSFET, so therefore we will put a resistance here, R2. Only then now the MOSFET can turn off, there is a discharge path. Also note on the primary side, we will put a diode resistor combination like this, the freewheeling diode and the freewheeling resistor. This is necessary to demagnetize the core so that it is ready to operate in the next cycle. So this is the transformer isolated drive for the MOSFET. In the transformer isolated gate drive shown here, the there is not much control in speeding up for the turn off of the device because the presence of R2. You can't make R2 too low because if the R2 is made too low while turning on, R1, R2 becomes an attenuator. So if you are applying 15 volts here, you can have a very low voltage applied uh, at the gate, gate source and uh, the MOSFET may not go into full enhancement. It may be in the linear region. Therefore, uh, it is better to replace R2 and have an active pull down to speed up the turn off process. So let us do that modification. So I will remove this, make some space and connect it here. And here I will put an active pull down circuit. So let me use a diode and a PNP transistor in this fashion. I'll put a resistor here and connect the base to this point. Let's see how this operates. Now, here there is an internal capacitance, remember, so we will have the gate source capacitance indicated by this uh, grade line here. Now, when, let us look at the waveform at the secondary when VB is having a pulse wave shape and the, in this fashion. Whenever VB is low, Q is off and whenever VB is high, Q is on. So let us say VB is high, Q is on, dot is positive, dot here will be positive. So you will have a wave shape something like that. And then when here VB goes low, Q turns off. So when Q turns off, there is a freewheeling action happening here. So the voltage exponentially will start coming down. So negative, it will it'll go negative and start exponentially coming down. Remember that this area, positive area, negative area should always balance out. Old second balance is always valid. So you will have a wave shape like this going negative. That is why we have put this diode D1 and on this side, the diode will clip it and will give you a nice neat positive, only the positive pulse. Okay. So during the time when it is positive, there is a current flow like this. 
and this second diode that we have put will have a polarity plus minus forward drop of 0.6 in this fashion. So there is a current flow and it will flow through R1 and charge up the CGS capacitance. So a charge of QGS is deposited in the MOSFET and the MOSFET will turn on. So during that time when, when you are driving the MOSFET on, diode is plus minus in this fashion. Look at the PNP transistor. Emitter is minus, base is plus, so, em so this transistor is off. So it is out of the picture. Now after this is on and then you uh, decide to switch off the MOSFET, you bring VB low. So when VB is low, you are, you are in this portion of the region, that is in this portion of the region of the pulse. So let us say that at this point, capacitance is fully charged to VC, whatever this peak value, VCC value and diode is now not conducting. This capacitance potential appears here. Emitter is positive. This is at zero potential with respect to this. There is no current flow. So therefore, there is a possibility of base drive to flow in this fashion. The emitter is positive because of the capacitor. So you will have a base drive flowing in this fashion here. It cannot go in this direction because of the diode. So it has to come in this direction and complete the circuit. So if the base drive flows, then the transistor Q can be on and you can have a larger collector current to flow in this fashion and discharge the capacitor. So the capacitor, in fact, the charge gate, gate source capacitor, in fact, uh, makes this active pull down work. So this is a much better circuit, much faster turn off can be achieved with this.